Hey guys, Mike in the Great Outdoors. Got a little bit of a troubleshooting uh, video here on a hot water heater on a RV that we just recently purchased. Um, but I need to give you a little bit of a backstory on it before I get into it. Um, the RV was uh, just a few years old. Uh, the individual that we bought it from said he never used any of the uh, the uh, equipment on the RV, the stove, the oven, the microwave, the hot water heater, um, the shower, none of this stuff's been used. So it's basically kind of like a brand new RV. All the appliances and everything are, are new. The AC he did use and the refrigerator. That's the only two things. So anyway, uh, after I bought it, one thing I didn't test was the hot water heater because there was no water uh, at the location. So I got the RV home and I went to test everything and I was pressurizing the system, got water through it, um, had all the air uh, through all the lines and everything and I fired up the hot water heater fired right up ran um, It ran for about two or three minutes and then it died the hot water heater died um, I went and looked at it Opened up the, the cover and went and looked at it and it was really 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 hot so I thought oh boy and um, Long story short I realized that the water had been shut off to the hot water heater and it had no hot water heater, so it overheated and shut down. Um, so I figured out where the valve was, turned the valve on, bled the air out of the hot water heater, and relit the hot water heater, and it lit. It lit, fired up, heated up, hot water, everything was good to go. Took the RV out to kind of like a shakedown, took it out to a local campground. And one of the first things they did was turn on the hot water heater after we got set up and it did not ignite. Uh, it would not start. It wouldn't do anything. So I was thinking maybe I was uh, out of gas and I checked it, but nope, had three quarters tank of propane. Everything was good there. No cobwebs, no nothing stuck in the, in the hot water heater. Um, and I tried everything, everything at the campground. Could not get it to start. Um, watched a couple videos on it and saw a couple people having a similar problem uh, But I wanted to actually show you what I did and what the fix is and How I came to that conclusion. So my symptoms were It was not sparking. It did not spark. It was not trying to spark when you uh, turned it on and uh, Not that I'm a certified propane gas mechanic but uh, I was trying to light it manually which uh, when it cycled to start the spark I, I lit it and it would burn it would run for about three seconds three or four seconds and then shut off uh, I could do that three times in a row and it would not stay lit um, if I just let it try to light by itself it would try three times and would not light but the whole time it was there was no spark no spark at all so i'm going to take you outside and i'm going to show you what i did and um tell you what the fix is so this is an atwood hot water heater looking at it everything looks good uh then there's no corrosion it looks all brand new and everything um but it would not light so let me show you a little closer what's going on. There are a few things in here that I initially checked. This right here, this little guy, that is a thermal fuse. And if it overheats, uh, I'm assuming it melts. Not 100% sure how that works, but it's a thermal fuse if it overheats. This did overheat, but uh, that fuse to me looked good. Did not have a multimeter. Uh, with me uh, So what I had done was you can bypass this for a second and all you got to do is unplug it here and Unplug the fuse just completely remove it And then plug This brown wire back in Okay, that bypasses that fuse I tried that it would not light um, another thing that uh, I watched a video that said check your spark gap 
inside here. I don't even know if I can get in there really. But back inside there, you will see a small, there's a small rod in there. And you can set the, the, the spark gap back in there and it's one eighth inch. So to do that, uh, you have to actually remove it. And there's just some screws here that you have to remove. There's one there, um, there's one here, and there's one up underneath here. And you can remove it. And I had did that. Uh, you have to remove this, this cable right here. This is just a little boot. You pull it off and you pull that out. And then this whole assembly can come out uh, and you can set the gap and that rod back in there. And at the same time, I used some sandpaper and I cleaned it all up, made sure it had a good gap. And then I put it all back together again. Um, another thing that, it, uh, that I checked was to make sure that there was no corrosion on any of the wires. Um, the brown one here, actually I checked them all and I actually did have a fair amount of corrosion on the thermal fuse. That's kind of after I actually already cleaned it. But it, it, it was pretty, pretty corroded. But even when I bypassed it, um, it did not, it did not fire. So I assumed that the, the fuse was still good. So, after I went ahead and cleaned it all up, put it back together, it still would not start. So, process of elimination, I was, I think it was either the uh, spark, sparking unit, or this module up here. Now, at first I didn't think it was the module because I could hear the gas being the valve here being opened up and let the gas in so I figured it was doing something um, I actually was rolling the dice ordered a new module which I'm gonna get into a couple numbers here in a little bit and replace the module and it fired up the first time so this is the new module oh, I'm gonna let you take a look at those numbers there real quick it looks identical to the one that's in there almost identical it's pretty close actually I think yeah it is it the configuration is a little bit different um, but it's the exact same size mounting holes and everything are the same um, the part numbers are different and that's the problem I had on, on Amazon I was trying to order this thing and I could not uh, figure out if I had the right module or not so uh, I was reading through some of the comments and a couple of people said yeah this one should work and everything and but I had nothing from the manufacturer that said that it would work or not so I went ahead and ordered the one that the, the other customer said would work and came in and I quickly installed it I hadn't removed the other one yet and like I said it fired up um, I'm going to put the links in below and show you what numbers they are I'm gonna finish putting my hot water heater back together uh, but I do want to show you one more thing. So, once I get that module replaced, um, I'm going to adjust the flame. Because when this was running, it was running really hot. And this part right here is your adjustment for the flame. It's, uh, for like high altitude, you can adjust what the flame is. And when I fired it up, it sounded like a, a jet engine going off. You could just hear and see the flame going in there. And from what I understand, what I've read, is you should have a mellow uh, sound coming from it. It shouldn't sound like a jet engine. And it should be a clear blue flame. So what you do is you loosen this nut up right here. You just loosen it back. And this slides back and forth. And that controls the airflow going in, into your flame. And you can adjust it back to where you got you know, a, a nice flame, but it's not roaring fire out the, out the exhaust. So uh, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and change all these parts. Uh, or the module and make this adjustment. I'm also going to put in a new thermal fuse which I got. Got a couple of them just in case. Um, I'm going to start off with all new parts and I'll put in the description below I'm going to put uh, the part numbers for all these things. 
I wanted to show you what this looks like inside this uh, this connection or this uh, spark unit. I think it's a piezo. I think that's the correct word. So after you take all the screws out, it kind of snaps right on this edge right here. You just gotta kind of pull it out, and it just slides out. So, and that is it. That's the gap. I can get a good focus on it. That's the gap right there, one eighth inch. And you want to make sure it's cleaned up. The contacts, kind of like a spark plug. Um, and you want to clean out inside here. You want to make sure you don't have anything in there. It looks like I got a little, little dirt in there. But that's what I'm going to go ahead and do. I'm going to go ahead and get this all cleaned up and put back together. And I'd actually had one of these on order uh, through Amazon. And they lost the order or something happened. So they went ahead and canceled it. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and replace the fuse and that module. Get this cleaned up a little bit more. And I'll show you how to adjust the flame. One more item you want to check while you have this unit out is this little shield right there. Let's try to get a good close view of it. Uh, should be centered on that, that hole right there. I can't tell. There we go. Well, that's better. Yeah, that should be centered. There is a screw on the bottom. You can make a little bit of adjustment, but it should be centered on the hole. Okay, everything's put together. We're gonna fire it up, so it runs. I'm gonna adjust the flame on it. Uh, everything went together well. I had this turned around the other way and the cables were too short, so you may have to play with that a little bit, but we're gonna go ahead and fire it up. Uh, one thing I'm gonna tell you real quick is you can actually unhook this. I'm gonna unhook this right now. And I'm gonna turn the switch on on the RV, and then when I plug that in, it's just like hitting the switch on the inside. Okay, gas is on. Let's see how it fires up. There we go, first click. Kind of see the flame in there. A little difficult. Let's see if we can 
get a quiet flame. There we go. This is going to show up too well on the camera. But she's fixed. So it was this module right here. New thermocoupler, or not a thermocoupler, but uh, fuse and module. And cleaned all the contacts up and set the, the, the air gap on the sparker. Well, that's it guys. I appreciate you watching. I hope that gave you some tips on troubleshooting your hot water heater in your RV. I will put the part numbers down in the descriptions below that uh, uh, shows you what parts I ordered and what worked for me. So again, thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe trying to help build the channel. And uh, if you got any suggestions or any other ideas on, on maintenance on the hot water heaters, let me know. Thank you.